While it may not be the quietest drone I've ever seen, it is certainly one of the most fascinating. It is the new Avada FPV drone from DJI. It's a very, very exciting release. And uh, we're here at Altex Academy, just north of Toronto, as we always are. It's actually great to be back here in person after a few years. We're gonna sit down with Alex and Ife, and we're gonna talk about this drone, not just the marketing speak, but really all the good and the challenging about this drone and where you as the user can really integrate it into your drone life. So let's go hang out with them and uh, get a chance to fly this little bugger. All right, Ify, it's great to be back here. It's so nice to not be doing this virtually, be in your space. You're new and improved space too. I love your geodesic dome, it's so exciting. Uh, and what a great reason to be back is to talk about the Zavada FPV drone. It's really a new breed of drone that we've seen emerge in the last several years. And uh, this version from DJI really kind of steps it up a whole lot. Um, I looked at the marketing stuff this morning. I didn't know a lot about this drone. It seems really, really exciting. And what I hope to accomplish today is just give the viewers a sense of, you know, what the marketing material says, but also what the professionals say and, and what kind of things you need to know in terms of the experience with this drone and moving forward. So when people ask you about FPV drones, and maybe in particular this one, what's your intro to them? What do you say? How do you describe it? I always tell them they have to try it because Evata is the drone where technical specs doesn't do us justice. Because if you compare that with any typical camera drones from DJI, uh, 4K 60 frames per second, right? Flight time has only got 15 minutes compared to if you compare that to the extended battery on Mini 3, 40 plus minutes, that's a huge difference. But none of those specs really justified the fun of flying it. This is a drone where, because of its design, the idea of where you fly and how you fly it is completely different. So tell me about that experience, about how this might be different than, than a typical cinema drone. Just like you mentioned, typical cinema drone were above objects, were having that bird's eye view from top down, but a VATA or any you know, FPV drone, really it's about immersive experience. It's about going through things. So you can fly through a mansion showcasing you know, different aspects. You can fly at events through people instead of just looking down from the air. Um, comparing to you in the traditional FPV drones, the main difference between Avat and them is it doesn't. This is actually designed from a camera zone perspective. Versus FPV drones, you really have to. It's an acquired skill. You have to spend you know hundreds of hours practicing, and it's almost like driving a race car on the tracks, right? right? It's an acquired skill. But Avata, you can pick it up and you can just try it. It's a lot of fun for beginners. And uh, speaking of beginners, one of the things that I noticed was that. Uh, you can control it with this joystick, which is new to me because I'm used to, obviously, the, the, the standard DJI controller. Um, and it looks really fun. It looks really intuitive. Um, and so this really excited me, this whole, it's a very new concept, new idea. What can you tell me about this? And then because I also noticed that Alex wasn't using this. He was using a regular controller. So when is this a great thing to use. I'm assuming this comes with the drone uh, when you buy it? With, or the package. with the package. So depending on which package you choose. Right. So when you buy the drone, you just get the drone and then you still need to get a controller separate. How does that work? So usually, uh, I guess that's two separate questions. Right. So options for Avata, you can get the drone and you choose the goggles you want right. to pair it up with. And then you can choose the goggles package with the motion controller. Oh. Or you can choose it with just the goggles package and then you can add them. Um, uh, the FPV controller, which are your traditional joystick controllers. Got it. So motion controller, it's really cool for beginners, especially for people who didn't have any drone experience. Um, this year we started having more family fun days because of Mini 3. So when Mini 3 came out, we started having families bringing kids out, trying immersive technologies. Um, but when Avata came out, it was actually a lot more friendly towards beginners, mm -hmm. although it weighs more than 250 grams. Uh, I find it's just, number one, it's safer because the propellers are protected. And we have more beginners, especially first time trying to fly a drone. Um, you have to always teach them on the joystick, what does it do, right? Versus the motion controller is you just point where you want to go, pull the trigger, and it just goes. It's very intuitive. At what point does the motion controller joystick become limiting. If you use motion controllers, if you got straight line, you've got objects or people in between you want to fly through, it's great, you point and go. But you can't actually rotate around a subject and, and control your, your focus actually on the subject. You can only do that with your traditional joystick controller because you've got the independent row and yaw and that's what creates you know, your perfect circle. One of the things that we've noticed today is it's an extremely windy day. 
And you know, in the past we've talked about the mini drone series, which did really, really well in the wind. I remember when we first did the, the original Mini, it wasn't doing very well in the wind, but when the Mini 2 came out, it was like, wow, this thing can handle. Improvement, and, and Mini 3 is even better. So lightweight, right? And it's just like, how could this possibly handle the wind uh, as good as it does? And then we got this thing, which is like twice the weight. And then you guys were saying, it's a really windy day for this. And it was really bucking around a lot. So is that, is this somehow not as good in the wind as the Mini? Or is it just like, it's just a really windy day and no drone is gonna be good in this? What can you tell me about this unit in terms of wind and all that sort of stuff. So in general, because of the flight characteristics of um, the Avatar or most of the FPV drones, they're not very good in wind. Right. Pro is they're good for indoors maneuverability, right? right? Versus if you get any drones, if you put on propeller guards or anything when you fly indoors, it's not gonna be as good as the FPV drones. Right, right. And so I guess that's the message is like, you know, they're very, drones are somewhat specialized and like you have one for this particular thing, one, for, DJ, I just want you to buy all their drones. <laughs> I think that's, that seems to be what it is. And then let's talk about battery life as well, because we're used to now, especially with the minis, like half an hour, 25 minutes, that kind of you thing. You don't get that on FPV drones right. and you don't get that on any FPV drones, really. Yeah. Um, this you get, you know, manufacturer says 15 minutes, so you get anywhere between eight and 10, depending on how fast you fly, depending on the windy condition. Um, but this is much better than your traditional FPV drones. Your typical FPV drones, the manufacturer rating would be around eight minutes, and then you get four to five, sure. right? So this is already doubling that. And what are you recommending for people buying this? How many batteries, additional batteries should they be buying? I would say go for the Fly More Kit. You know, personally, Fly More Kit is essential when I buy any drone. So you get two additional batteries plus the one that comes with the drone, three batteries with the battery charging hub. That would be your minimum. Right. And uh, this is not a DJI product. It's a free software thing. Alex was talking to us uh, in the field about it. It's a, it's a gyro stabilizing software that is free that he recommended that we pass through that software. We can basically just set it up however we want the stabilization to occur. Can you tell us a little bit about that software? So it's actually really cool because when we, if you look at Avada, it doesn't have the roll stabilizer like traditionally on any drone, but it actually records, I guess, what do you call it? Trying to remember my technical team's- Gyroscopic you know, gyros data? Yes, I can't even say that word correctly. <laughs> Thank you. So it records all the data, which if you use it with a post stabilizing software, um, you can stabilize the image to whichever way you want it, right? Which is really cool. Who should be buying this drone? I remember I said this about mini series, mini, mini one, two, or three, it's a drone for everyone, right? Avada, I would say, I personally, I'm seeing you know two ends. One end is pure consumer, people who just want to have fun, just want to try it and get into it, create a different type of experience. The other end is actually I'm seeing a lot of film people buying this because it gives them the different perspective. It's not so much about FPV flying FPV or racing for FPV. It's more about film people being able to get still a really good camera and achieving a completely different perspective. Before we're flying above subjects like what we talked about. Um, this, you know, if you do real estate photography, I'm seeing most of our clients from our students from real estate marketing are buying this because now they can showcase mentions. They can have a continuous flight showing all the different rooms, you know, front yard, backyard, and then having a pulling away shot of the whole property. So it's great. And for any commercial property showcase too, so golf course, you know, we talked about dealership, um, any even venue type, right? We're thinking about doing actually a monthly theme tour with Avata at every location. I really hope I can get uh, a green light to go to Ontario Science Center, for example. So you can fly through really interesting indoor objects and have that immersive experience. So I think, you know, for, for filming marketing, there's definitely, it's going to open a whole new page, but keep in mind, it is more than 250 grams. So, so they're gonna need a license. Yes, you, you need a license unless you're flying at a club, a recreational club. For example, because of Avata actually applied for our uh, field to have the club status, then you're exempt from, um, uh, from the license, but that has to be on designated locations. And if you live in Southern Ontario and you don't have your license yet, of course, there's only one place to go, Altex Academy, get your advanced license right here and get that drone. That's it, I think we've uh, covered all of our bases. This is a fantastic product. I'm excited to try it uh, at some point in the future and uh, not uh, destroy my drone like I have <laughs> already. So it's nice that it's got the propeller guards on it. Thank you so much for your time today and for you and Alex uh, showing us around and uh, having a little contest, that was fun. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me.